Welcome back everyone. Today's video is a little bit of a follow up to a previous one we did a long time ago that you guys seem to absolutely love. Most of you guys are either at school or have been to school at some point in your lives. You know what it's like to have things banned but some of the items on this list take things a little bit too far. My name is Danny Burke and this is the top 10 shocking school bans part 2. Starting off at number 10 now we have toilet doors. In 2012 a school in Texas removed the doors to its bathroom stalls in order to keep kids safe. McKinney North High School caused a lot lot of outrage from students and parents, with many of them feeling the true reason for the ban on doors was because of illicit sexual behaviour in the bathrooms. One high school student said they walked into the bathroom before and seen girls there with guys, but the school denies it was for this reason. They said it was specifically to tackle bullying and students fighting in those cubicles. Do you guys believe them on that? And if you do, do you think that's a fair reason to remove the privacy that a cubicle door provides? Next up at number 9 now, we have the word meep. In 2000 and nine, the principal of Danvers High School in Massachusetts banned the word meep, made famous by Beaker, who is one of the Muppets. According to the story, students were meeping in disruptive ways in their lessons. Teachers were unable to get them to stop, and so they felt it was necessary to just ban the word altogether. The principal said to the media, it has nothing to do with the word, it has to do with the conduct of the students. We wouldn't just ban a word just to ban a word. Some people agreed that this was a necessary thing to do, while others said the principal took it too far when he started forwarding emails he had been sent containing the word meep to the police. I can only imagine making the word meep borderline illegal to high school students probably had the opposite of the desired effect. Next up at number 8 now we have skinny jeans. In 2009 Kimbra Middle School in Texas announced they would be cracking down on what was a new trend at the time, wearing skinny jeans. Seth Chamley was a student who turned up to school wearing skinny jeans one day. The teachers gave him a very simple choice, go home or wear something provided by the school instead. He went home and his parents ended up keeping him there, deciding instead to homeschool him. The school said the jeans were too tight and that it was disruptive when he sat down. I mean this one is is kind of funny, but in the years since then, more and more schools around the world have done similar things. Do you think it's fair to enforce certain dress codes, or are schools always behind the times when it comes to clothes? Next up at number seven now, we have being on social media. Now, for this one, you guys may think I'm referring to a student being on social media at school. No, I mean they were banned from simply having an account at all. This story comes from Pope John the 23rd Regional High School in New Jersey. In 2005, the Reverend there held an assembly in which he told students they would have to dismantle their personal pages on sites such as MySpace and other blogs or face suspension from the school. He said he was doing this to protect students from online sexual predators who may use the sites to gain personal information and pictures from the children. If this was the reason then I guess it's nice that he thought to protect them, but I think it's a totally mental way to do things in this day and age. What would you guys do if your school told you to not access social media at home? Moving on to number six. Next now we have Halloween. In 2013 parents of students across Pennsylvania were very angry at what they saw as a ban on Halloween in schools there. Local school districts had decided children would no longer be allowed to dress up in Halloween costumes if Halloween fell on a school day. Many parents felt it was a worrying trend of schools trying to strip education of any fun at all. Sue Dimoff, whose grandchildren attended Sporting Hill Elementary School, was quoted at the time as saying, I'm really upset. They want to change Christmas. Christmas, Halloween, there's no Valentine's Day parties, it's ridiculous. What do you guys think about this? I grew up in the UK where we never really dressed up for Halloween at school anyway, but I would be interested to hear some of our American viewers opinions on this. Next up at number 5 now we have Evolution. In 2009 Smith Cotton High School's marching band started selling these t-shirts. The shirt there says Tiger Pride Marching Band Brass Evolutions 2009. And we've got the famous image known as the Ascent of Man, where each of them is holding a different brass instrument. Well, some religious parents didn't like that and complained that the mention of evolution offended them. The school seemed to agree with them and ended up buying every single shirt for $700 just to keep them out of the school. This caused a lot of outrage because many people felt this was silencing established science and had nothing to do with religious sensitivity. Moving on to number 4 now, we have Flaming Hot Cheetos. In 2012, several schools in California, New Mexico and Illinois banned 
into flaming hot Cheetos and began confiscating them on site. The schools were trying to combat what they saw as a worrying trend when it came to student obsession with this snack. One senior was quoted as saying, 8 out of 10 kids bring them to school. I used to be one of them. I ate them every day, even for breakfast, and I got really big. There were days when if my mother didn't buy them for me, I would get so mad. It took me three months to quit. Do you guys think this is a positive step for the schools to make regarding their students' health, or is it totally pointless to ban just one specific brand of snack? Moving on to number three now, we have books. If there's one place you didn't expect books to be banned, it's probably a library. I guess if there's a second place though, it's probably a school. Many schools have banned certain books over the years from being on their premises based on their content. There are obviously ridiculous ones such as Harry Potter, which some say promotes witchcraft and dark magic. There's ironic ones such as Animal Farm and Fahrenheit 451. And then there's ones that are still being fiercely debated today, such as The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Those books were written when slavery was legal in the US. Some see them as important historic texts to learn from, but others feel the content is just too racist for students. Next up number 2 now, we have Father's Day cards. Schools in Scotland made the headlines in 2008 when they banned students from making Father's Day cards for fear of embarrassing classmates who lived with single mothers or lesbian parents. Family rights campaigners condemned the policy as absurd and argued that it marginalises fathers. Local authorities responded by saying that they need to reflect the changing pattern of family life. Life. What got people even more angry though was that Mother's Day card making was still totally permitted, leaving many to question the potential double standards. And finally number one now we have cartwheels and handstands. A school in Western Australia got a lot of flack for banning its students from doing cartwheels and handstands because they were too dangerous. Bunbury Primary School say that at least two students every single day were coming to their offices with injuries to their wrists. School principal Shane Doherty said, this is not about stopping kids from taking risks and having fun, but attempting things like flips or handstands on sloping grass areas without learning how to do it properly is never a good idea. Do you think that's fair, because children do sometimes hurt themselves, or is this way too over the top? And on that note, which one of those do you think was the most over the top? Have you heard of any more crazy ones? Should we do a part 3? As always, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you as always guys for watching, my name is Danny Burke, and I'll see you all in the next video.